palette gets produced in production and then it gets created in the Savannah system. We then decide where it goes. So we do a lot of frozen orders, but we also have a fresh storage area that the order fulfillment portion of it is being handled by Savannah. You scan the pallet onto Conveyor 101, that's our in-feed conveyor, and in doing so, you also tell the system what you want to do with that pallet. We have a couple of options there. You can in-feed the pallet and wrap it. You can in-feed it, not wrap it. And you could also, if we're gonna bulk wrap pallets for an order, but you don't wanna hand wrap them, we also added a feature where we could have it go through the wrapper and then go ahead and reject it on the other side. So right after it goes to the wrapper, we have a print apply system. It applies the placard to the pallet in motion and then it moves on to the squaring station where it makes sure that it's lined up with the conveyor. And then right after that, it goes to the profile check where it just makes sure that the entirety of the pallet will hold within the, the cranes. It's looking at everything, not only with sensors, but timing to make sure that nothing's overhanging, nothing's on the front, and also nothing's sticking out of the sides. The profile check is right before the reject conveyor. So that way, if it failed profile check, it would reject the pallet. We have TV screens there that are running savannah.net application on it that it tells us on there what the issue was. If it passes that profile check, you move on to go into the freezer. The system gives it a mission. When we create SKUs, we assign it a storage location. Anything that's gonna be a high volume picker. So that's gonna go to the GTPs because we know we're gonna be picking those a lot. We wanna get them to the GTP as fast as possible. We're gonna put them close to the outfeeds. So we have three blocks. Block one belongs to crane one. Block two is shared by both cranes. And then block three belongs to crane two. The center block is 13 pallets deep and the outer blocks are four pallets deep. The middle one, for crane one, it can move over seven pallet positions, and then crane two can move over six pallet positions. If everything is in fed, everything's inside, order comes in, and we have control room operator and supervisor that are helping out with the order fulfillment. They'll make the determination if that is something we want to send to the GTP, or if it's something that's easy, we can send it out, whereas, we try to use a GTP for the multi-SKU orders, which we have a lot of, because that's where they really shine. Uh, having upwards of 10, 12 pallets coming down to the GTP stations, you pick a few boxes off one pallet, the system takes the pallet, another pallet comes in, and so forth. The way the order allocation works is we go into the Savannah system, we click on the order that we want to allocate. From the order allocation screen, you can do a check because we do multi-SKUs and they're different types of boxes, we force Savannah to bring us out heavier boxes first, because that should be at the bottom of your stack and then you stack on top of it. Once they've built the pallet to be shipped, the system knows when you are done with fulfilling the order, the T-cart, that's what handles the GTP stations, will pick up the pallet, take it out to its outfeed, that will go through the wrapper, it will wrap the pallet, label it, and then if it's for an order, it'll it'll reject it so that way we can go ahead and turn around and put it on the order for your source pallets when you're done with them it'll ask are you done with this pallet do you want to send it out you click yes the only times it doesn't ask is if you completely deplete a pallet and now it becomes an empty pallet it will take it on its own and say hey you've depleted this pallet i'm going to go send it to the stacker d stacker 